Hello folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to create tic-tac-toe using JavaScript. Now I might have to split this up over a few sections, but to start off with, what I want to do is just set up this game board and make sure that the grid is all working correctly. So let's just get straight into it. I've got my blank document here and I've got my blank files to start with. I'm using Sublime, so within Sublime I can just type HTML, hit tab, and it will auto-populate some of the basic tags that I need. So it just saves a little bit of typing, but you can just manually type these out if you want. So the first thing to do is add in a title. So we'll call this tic-tac-toe. And then when I save and then refresh this document, you can see it comes up at the top there. So now that I've done that, I want to create the section here that's going to house the grid. Now for that, I am going to use a section tag. You could use a div, but I prefer to use a section for this. And I will give us a class of board. Now for now, I don't want to put anything in within the section, so I'm just going to close that tag out. I'll come back to it afterwards and add in the contents. So before I actually style anything, I need to make sure that this style sheet is linked to my HTML document. And that is going to be done within the head tag. So just above my title tag, I will add another section, or rather another tag, which I'll say link, hit tab to autocomplete, and it's going to be my style sheet. So the file name is style.css. I can just call out the file name without the folder location simply because these two files are in the same folder. So now if I go into my style sheet, anything that I add in here is going to be called through to the document. And there's a few things that I want to override from the default values. So that is margin, I want to set that to zero, padding becomes zero, and box sizing goes to border box. Now I can begin styling the board class. So I'm going to target it by saying dot board. And first of all, I'll give it a width and a height. So I'll go with 320 pixels by 320 pixels. And I will give it a background image. So the background image is going to be URL grid.png. So I'm just going to show you the folder structure I've got here. Everything is all in the same folder. So that's why I'm not having to put in the folder location. It's just the file name. They're all in the same folder here together. So I've got my grid and I've also got my cross and circle that I'm going to be calling through later on. Okay, so let's go back to the style sheet. Now you can see that I've loaded that in. It has come up and it's the correct size, but it doesn't really look quite right. And that's because the image is actually bigger than 320 by 320 that I've used here. So what I need to do is make sure that I'm scaling this background. So we'll say background size, and I'm gonna set that to cover. So now it's going to cover the entirety of its available space. So it basically just shrinks down to make sure it fits. Now let's add a little bit of styling to the body of the document itself so that I can position this grid in the middle of it. So we'll target the body tag and first of all, let's give it a background color. So a background color I have chosen as light sea green. Okay, there you go. So now you can see a little bit of a contrast between that and the grid. And I need to give it an overall height. So I'm gonna use 100 VH. So it's just going to be as tall as the viewport. Next, I'll set the font family. So I don't actually have any text on the screen just yet, but I'm gonna set this up just in advance for when I do have text. Now I'm gonna be using Helvetica and then we'll add sans serif at the end. And now what I want to do is move this grid into the middle of the screen. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, but I'm going to be using Flexbox for this. So I'll say display flex, which turns the body into a flex container and the grid then becomes a flex item within it. So I can adjust its positioning. I can say justify content center and I can also say align items center and now the grid is sitting in the middle of the screen so let's just add a little bit more styling to this first of all I want to add a border radius and we'll go with 3 rem and then I'll add a box shadow just to kind of give it a little bit of a 3D effect so it's coming off the screen. So we'll go 0, 0, 15 pixels, 5 pixels, and RGBA 50, 50, 50, 0 0.5. So that's looking pretty nice. What I would also like to add in is that when I hover over it, the mouse turns into a little cursor. So let's say board hover, and the cursor at that point becomes a pointer. I save this again. Now when I hover over it, you can see it turns into a little pointer hand. Now this is fine, but as far as the browser is concerned, this is just a still image. It doesn't recognize the fact that this is actually a grid with nine individual cells inside it. So that's what I need to manually add in now. now if I go back to the index.html file, remember I said that I'm going to come back to this section and add in some content to it. 
So that's what we need to do next. So this section is going to have the individual cells within it. And each cell I'm going to put in as a div. So I'll say div class, uh, give it a class of cell, and it doesn't actually need to have any content. So we can just close the div class straight away. So that's one cell created. Now I just copy this down two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. So now I'm gonna have nine individual divs. So if we go into inspect this, let's see how this comes up. Got my section and when I open it out, you can see it has nine divs inside it, but they don't really highlight anything on the actual browser. And that's because as far as this is concerned, these divs don't take up any space and don't have any content. So what I need to do is go back into my style sheet and actually set this up as a grid. So I need to tell it that this board contains a grid of three by three individual items within it. Well, to do that, I can just use display of grid. So I go back into my board class and I say display grid, save that. And now all of those individual divs will become grid items. So I need to define how many rows and columns that I want to have. So for that, I'm going to say grid template columns. Well, I'm going to have three of them. So I can just say repeat rather than having to type individually three times. And how wide do I want each column? Well, I can just say one FR and this means one fraction. So essentially it's going to take the available space and it's going to divide it evenly between the three columns. So now I just do the exact same thing, but now for rows, we'll say grid template rows. I'm going to repeat three times one FR. Okay, so if I save that now, nothing actually visually changes, but when I go into inspect this, there should be a way to display this grid overlay. There we go. So now you can actually see that it's split this up into a grid. And basically that entire cell or each of these cells is assigned to one of these points. Now, if I open this out to where my divs are, you can see they've been assigned as well. So each of those divs now corresponds to an actual cell within this overall grid. And this is what I'm going to be using to target them individually so that when I click on one of them, I'll be able to tell which one it is and then I can put a marker within it. There is one very slight issue with this though. So if I zoom all the way in and I inspect it again, so let's go and bring up these divs. You can see that actually the div goes over outside of the individual cell and over onto the gray lines in between. So what I want to do is add a little gap in between each of the grid elements. So I've got my display grid, I've got all that set up here, and we'll just say gap of two pixels. Now I know that this grid line is five pixels wide, but because I've shrunk it down, it's about two pixels. So if I save this again, now you can see that each of the grids or each of those divs now selects a cell properly. Okay, so let's reset this back and continue styling this. So the next thing I want to do now that the grid is pretty much working and set up correctly is how do I add in the individual markers? Right now, clicking on this does nothing. I haven't added any JavaScript. But what do I do to these cells to tell them whether there's a circle or a cross inside them? Well, it already has a class. So each cell has a class of cell. So it goes to say that if I just add an additional class to it, which is say circle, and then I add styling to that within my style sheet, it will recognize it and it will add a circle within that cell. Well, let's go back and add that in just now. So underneath my board, I'm going to target the class of circle, which is the one I've just created. And for now, all I want to put in here is a background image. So the background image is going to be URL. Remember, I've already drawn these before, so it's circle.png. So if I go back and just to show you the folder structure, there's the file right there. So I can just call it straight through from here. If I save this again, it's going to come up. So we can see that within this first cell, this first div that I've added this circle class to, it's now drawing that circle for me. It doesn't look great. It's a little bit too big and not quite positioned correctly, but we can address that just now. What I will just do is add a couple of extra things here. I will say the background size is going to be 80%. So it will just be 80% of the size of the cell that's available to it. I don't want it to take up the entire cell. So now you can see it's shrunk, but it's just drawing extra circles next to it. By default, what it does is just fills in as many of them as it can within the space. So if there's more space available, it's just going to put another little bit of an image next to it. Well, I don't really want that. So let's just make sure that we position the background in the middle, first of all. So background position center. 
So there you go, that's kind of moved into the middle, but now I've got little circles around it. So then we just say background repeat, no repeat. And there we go. It's now just taking one circle, shrinking it down to 80%, putting it right in the middle, and it's not adding any more around it, even though there's a little bit of space for it to do it. So that's the circle set up. Well, the cross is going to be done in the exact same way. Now if we go back into the HTML file and just add a cross at the next one, so we just add this extra second class onto it. And then all I need to do here is just add the styling for it. So I'll copy circle, put it down here as cross. And it's going to be exactly the same, just that the image is going to be different. So now it's cross.png. Save that, and there we go. It's copied, or rather it's done the exact same styling to it. So it's taken it to 80%, put it in the middle, and it's not added any more pictures around it. So this is good, and I can actually streamline it a little bit more because quite a lot of this is just the same between the two classes. So all this stuff here, well, that applies to both the circle and the cross. So what I can actually do is take it out of there and also take it out of here and then say below circle, comma, cross, and then apply that to both of them. So both of these classes are going to have these settings because they both share them, but then for the image itself, well, that's going to be specific to the circle and to the cross. So I'll do those separately. So if I save this again, just to make sure it still works, and there you go, you can still see them there. And I can just test this out, put it on another cell, I'll add a circle there, and we'll add a cross here, save that. And there we go, they're coming up in the right places. So that's pretty much the game board set up and fully functional. Now, of course, at the moment, it's all manual. I'm not able to click on these cells to add in the markers. And that's going to come in the next video when I add in the JavaScript. So for now, if you found this one useful, then please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.